is time. It is time. They're trying to cancel another celebrity again because re and reasons and reing reasons. <laughs> oh, don't you start with me today, Karen. Hello everyone, I am Mecca Random 42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy. Who are we going full Harpy on today? Some random blue check mark on Twitter, somebody who claims to be a journalist, claims to be, oh, what's going on? This is all related to the first thing that anybody says that they get their little, their little feelings hurt over, they gotta go and cancel somebody over. This stems back to the JK Rowling stuff where she's going in after years and years and years of, of caving to the alt-left wackadoo hate mob, the second she said something they didn't like, they had to pile on her, and John Cleese has been coming to her defense. Well, now they're piling on him. And even though he is very much on their side, even though he is one of the smartest people I have ever seen in my entire existence, they're trying to cancel him. Who's trying to cancel him? Who is this Caitlin Burns? Caitlin Burns, a freelance journalist, a contributing writer for Vice Political Teen Vogue, feminist soccer lady, and she's a she, her lady, women person. I said, are you projecting much? Because she says, if... I were John Cleese, I'd simply wish to be relevant. Well, bravo for proving how out of touch you are because you know who is not actually relevant. She, her, crazy people, journalists who just want to cancel people for hate clicks and rage bait. That is actually not relevant. And if you didn't have your head up your own patootie and were so worried about people trying to cancel everybody and offending everybody, you'd realize that there's actual real stuff going on in the world that might need some, I don't know, attention at the moment. There's some real stuff, and I'm not even going to talk about everything that's happening this second. Just the past year, with the great toilet paper shortage of 2020, we have been getting this sort of craziness still inserted into our attempts at escapism, our attempts at having some sense of normalcy. No, 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 no. They're still on about everything that they're going on being offended by, and I'm tired of it, really. Frankly, I'm tired of it. Is there, there was an article too from Variety. John Cleese sparks backlash over transphobic tweets in defense of J.K. Rowling. Okay, first off, first off. Like I said, in this day and age where people have a little bit more to worry about than some hurt feelings that actually really, really aren't meant to make you feel bad even, right? They're not meant to diminish reduce your existence. They are not meant to erase you from society. They are not meant to make you feel irrelevant. They are not meant to take any shots at you personally. They're never ever actually intended to do such things. But you know what is harmful and what is actually attempting to silence and hurt and harm people? It is the all left wackadoo hate mobs. Those are the people who are actually doing a lot of damage to society by going on complaining, going crazy that somebody might be offended. That they, you know, see, seriously, because nine times out of ten, and I'm not talking specifically in this case because there are actually genuinely transgender people who, who really feel like their rights are being diminished by people trying to bring in some other, some maybe some other medical sort of clarifiers, qualifications, things like that. People don't want you to not exist. We don't want you to not be transgendered if you're happiest that way. We want people, we want everybody to learn how to live as a society. And sometimes people's feelings are going to get hurt. But, but you know what you don't have any right to do? You do not have any right to try and attack and hurt others to make them feel slighted, to make them feel shame, to make them feel like they are wrong in any way. You don't have any right to go and try and cancel people out of society. And this is, this is the biggest, the biggest point that I always try and make anytime we get any of these accusations of transphobia, anytime we get any of these uh, accusations of isms, of, of any of that sort of thing, is the intent behind it isn't to try and make you not exist. It isn't trying to take away your right. It isn't trying to take away your feelings. It isn't trying to diminish or, or minimalize your existence and your struggles because there's a lot of people who are struggling right now. Pretty much everybody, everybody on the planet is struggling with some sort of thing. 
Everybody in their in the entire existence of humanity has been made fun of based on the way they look, the way they act, the way they dress, the way they think, what who they're associated with, who their family is, what political affiliation, what lack of political affiliation, what music they listen to, what music they don't listen to, what movies they like, what movies they don't like. Everybody in the history of everything has had some sort of thing said to them that made their feelings be hurt or said about them. Everybody has been generalized. Everybody has been put into some sort of category without their consent even. Everybody at some point has had something crappy that they've been going through. Everybody. It is not an excuse. It is not an excuse to be nasty to everybody else. It really, really isn't. It really isn't. It is not an excuse to decide immediately that everybody needs to conform to whatever the flavor of the month politically correct ideological term is. Because what happens? Every few years, it changes. Every few years, something changes. There are things that I would list off as pre-approved politically correct terminology for people of other ethnic groups that I would never be able to say on YouTube that were perfectly acceptable 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, 80 years ago. You've got terminology like that Latin X thing going around that people who are described as that do not like that and they are offended by personally. All right, so every single person on the planet has something, has something. Now, let's let's see, what are they saying? What's the specifics? Monty Python actor John Cleese is being accused of transphobia following a series of tweets when he defended Harry Potter's author J.K. Rowling. He's he's on the side of the very, very liberal left-leaning people. And he's also one of the most intelligent people I've ever seen. But like I said, Because of this last year with the great toilet paper shortage of 2020, everybody snapped. Everybody. Every man, woman, and child has snapped, and nobody is even realizing it. And that is one of the bigger problems here. I snapped, you snapped, he snapped, she snapped. We all snapped. Gordon Ramsay snapped, too. He's kind of crazy. He said that his little mansion wasn't quite... uh, He he felt like he wanted to bugger off without his family, uh, despite quarantine. There, everybody snapped. Everyone. Everyone. Calm your tits. Chill. Chill. Calm down. We need to go into the fields. You know what? We need we need to go into the fields for a second because that's where we're going to be safe, right? What are they? Why are they? What do they mean? <laughs> I had to. I was going a million miles a minute and I'm still kind of going there. I think we've all went mad. You want to come with me? I think it's fun here. I like it here. This is where the crazy happens. And it's kind of fun because you can see the aliens in the fourth dimension. Like they're kind of right off screen here. And it's kind of fun sometimes. Except when they're like trying to grab you through the closed door and all you got to do is sort of back off and they can't get you. That's kind of an odd thing. That might have been a dream I had. Where are we? Oh, we're talking about the other people who went crazy. In June, Rowling made headlines for stating she believes one's biological sex is their real sex and criticizing trans transgender people for was she criticizing was she actually criticizing or she's making an opinion or making a statement for erasing the concept of sex in september cleese signed a letter showing his solidarity with rowling now now keep in mind jk rowling has been a lgbt champion of rights She has been one of these people who wants to go out of her way to be inclusive and to not to not shun or poo poo on anybody based on their identities. Right. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Once we have people whose only identity is their label. That's when I start to feel a little sorry for humanity in general. Like it's it's really it really feels sad to me that people don't have anything beyond a label and that they they can completely flip the switch on anything in their head just from one transgression from one piece of offense from one thing and this this comes in in the computer day and age and the internet age especially on youtube like anytime i say something that people don't like well i'm probably never going to see that person again and that's how we, we are as a society where we have so much information so much at our at our disposal that you can create your own little narrative based on things that never ever offend you based on things that never challenge the way you think, based on never having any forgiveness of anything that might just just be something that was not even meant with any ill intent. And this was where we're at. And that's what's so scary. And that's what's so sad as a society is that nobody can look past 
oh, well, it's just one or two things I don't agree with. I even kind of get that way now. I'm unfollowing people on Twitter because I just get so tired of seeing the one or two things that these people get obsessed with that I just don't agree with. And that's if that's all you're telling me, then what? Then what? I mean, that's all you're telling me is the one thing that I disagree. With. Can you can you go back to why I followed you in the first place? Can you entertain me? Can you sing? Can you dance? Can you tell me a joke? Can you do something? And a lot of the times they can't do that because then people get so obsessed with the one little thing and that becomes their focus. But like I said, we've all kind of gone nuts. I think we've all kind of gone crazy. Becca summed it all up <laughs> uh, with you on that forever. Well, thank you. Thank you. On Sunday morning, a Twitter user asked Cleese about his stance on Rawlings views. Cleese wrote, I'm afraid I'm not that interested in trans folks. I just hope they're happy and that people treat them kindly. Right now, I'm more focused on, let's see, focused here. Oh, on the whole, on the whole orange man bat. Threats to democracy in America and the rampant corruption in the UK, the appalling British press, and the revelations about, you know, the, the, the guys who are out there to uh, try and be law and order or whatever. I don't know if I can even say a lot of those words. And here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. In this day and age, when there's a few more important pressing issues in the world right now than, than hurting somebody's feelings, I kind of have to agree with him. I don't find this to be terribly offensive. I just think he's prioritizing things a little bit differently. He's coming in and prioritizing. Here's the thing that we can immediately fix and take care of now. Oh, and by the way, I hope you're happy. I hope you have your, your gender assignment in the way that you, you need to to be a happy functioning member of society. Now we're going to worry about the big shit for a second, okay? Okay, can you hold your thoughts for a second? Can you hold on to your ice cream cone? I get it. I know you want to talk to me about your ice cream cone. I get it, and I know it's going to be melting. You know what? Eat your own ice cream cone. That's what it's there for. It's there for you to enjoy and consume, and I'm going to go and worry about this other shit right now because that's where my priorities are, but nothing against you personally. That's what it comes off as to me. It doesn't, it, he just says he's not that focused on it. I don't believe this is transphobic in any way, shape, or form. I just believe that this is a different priority, right? And this, this is what is so sad as a society with this day and age, with everything that's going on. If you tell any person that you are more focused on one thing than the thing that they want you to be upset by, then automatically you're an ist, you're a phobe, you're a, you're a this person, you're a that whatever. And without even getting too political or, or even topical with 2020 and the great toilet paper shortage and all that, if you tell some people that you're more prioritizing somebody's, how well are they doing from isolation? How well are they doing with this versus a physical ailment? Then they want to shame you and they want you. And, and I think it's all a product of everybody is scared. Nobody knows what to do. And everybody wants to feel like they are the best and the most righteous and have the best answer to everything, when in reality, none of us do. Not a single one person has the answer to everything, but what we do have is we have a society, a humanity. We have a way to kind of weigh and, and figure out the needs of the many, to make as many of us as happy as we can be right now, and as productive, and as healthy, and as safe as we can be right now. And we, we really are so focused on, ever, since everybody snapped anyway, we are so focused on how, how can we seem like we're the best and we're saying the right thing and doing the right thing, right? How can we be perceived as being the best person out there? How can we get the brownie points? How can we get the endorphins? How can we get the likes? How can we get the retweets? How can we get the clicks? How can we get the socially acceptable answer to as many people to get our little, see, you did the right thing. You said the right thing with as, with as little pushback, backlash, clapbacks as possible. And the problem with modern day, with, with the, especially with a cell phone, Twitter, social media day and age, it is so much about who's got the best clapback, who's got the best one liner, who can one up, who can say the right thing to make them the end of the conversation who can get the last word and clearly if anybody knows anything about anything the person with the last word is me your favorite consumer advocate harpy <laughs> please like the video if you liked it if you didn't like it keep your comments to yourself thanks for watching if you liked it make sure to hit that like button and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe see you in the next video bye
I have Twitter, I have Parler, I have Instagram now. I barely use any of them except for the Twitters. And that's the other thing, these, these, uh, these journalists who come in and say, oh, he needs to be more relevant. I don't know who the fuck you are, but I know who John Cleese is. I'll bite your legs off! 